Thank you for joining us on the news now. I am Frank Komalape. President Muhammad Buhari Wednesday in Abuja said the government urged forward in promoting sustainable development by creating a digital application, iMark, that enables citizens to monitor and evaluate capital projects in real time with unimpeded access to information on stakeholders, including contract terms and the contractors. President Mohamed Buhari, who launched the digital application at the Council Chamber of the State House, said the innovation will help to forestall the practice of abandoning projects as all stakeholders like communities, civil society organizations, contractors, ministries, departments and agencies and citizens will continually interact on one platform. The president said IMAC, which will provide a regular update on the status of capital projects across the country through bottom-up interactive processes, will be fully involved at every stage, including knowing the cost, structure, benefit and framework for maintenance after completion. In the meantime, the Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability Central Bank of Nigeria, Aisha Ahmad, had told the House of Representatives that she does not know how many votes or notes were printed in recent redesign of the Naira. Ahmad, who represented the Civilian Governor Godwin Imifeli while responding to questions from members of the House, said she could not ascertain the exact amount and number of notes printed. The CBN Deputy Governor said she did not want to give a wrong figure. The CBN had recently introduced new 200 Naira, 500 and 1,000 Naira note with concerns that the newly designed denominations are scarce in circulation. I will bring you more details later on on our subsequent bulletins. In the meantime, the Senate has postponed the passage of the 2023 budget until Wednesday, December 28th. The lawmakers also postponed the passage of the finance bill till December 20th. The Senate President Ahmed Lawa made his announcement during plenary on Thursday. He explained that the Senate is postponing the budget, uh, budget passage because some of challenges in recent receiving or receiving in the report on the 2023 budget from the Appropriations Committee. The reason for this, he added, is that the Appropriations Bill came to the National Assembly from the executive with some problems, and the challenge became obvious and difficult to deal with. Senator Lawan added that the Senate Appropriations Committee kick-started a process of cleaning up the 2023 budget first, and they re-engaged the executive in the cleanup exercise. And now, an All Progressives Congress support group under the auspices of Tinobu Shetima Support Group on Thursday stormed Katsina State in continuation of its door to door mobilization in the Northwest. The group, led by the managing director of Kano Roads and Traffic Agency and for a former Kano State House of Assembly, Bafa Baba Dan Agude, has undertaken a series of activities to mobilize the youth with their PVCs to register on the group's website. According to Dan Agudi, over 400 support groups in Castina State have so far been registered with over 250,000 members in attendance, which he believed is quite encouraging. And still in politics, labor leaders in Oyo State have charged the state government to place more premium on the welfare of its workers. These and many more were the focal point of discourse of a consultative meeting held at Executive Council Chambers in Ibadan. Leaders of various unions present at the party called on state authorities to create mutual lines of communications where the grievances can be properly tabled to address the plight of workers across the state. Similarly, Oyo State Governor Shei Makidi assured that the government, under his watch, would do its utmost to address all areas affecting the interests of workers in her workforce. As I'm talking to this now, all the body in the state are like us. Because he told us, I didn't be your press brother, I didn't be, you have done some things. The governor, oh, you are not in you are. Just like he has enumerated, there are so many issues that you have helped us to sort out, but there are still other issues. And I told my people, if there are no issues again that we are going to take to the government through the 
Let's say they vote. Then there won't be any need for all of us to be here. If all issues are sorted and there are no issues, everything is clean, clear, then there won't be any use for labor leaders. It is not your dream. It is the failure of past governments that have not adhered to the provisional con uh, uh, const uh, the constitution of the provision that whenever salaries are increased, pensions should also be increased. To the extent that as I speak with you, Your Excellency, our pension has remained stagnant since 2007. So what to do address that? What you should I tell people, you know, yes, I do have uh, certain powers as the governor of the state, but power without control is accident. That is uh, what you're going to have if you uh, 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 what you're supposed to reserve as your last option. If that is your first option and uh, you cannot agree, so what do you do? And now, at least 11 people have been electrocuted to death and many others injured in Zaria, local government area of Kaduna State. Now, the incident occurred on Wednesday afternoon in Guagwaje area of Zaria, local government, leading to the burning of some buildings and business premises. According to the management of Kaduna Electricity Distribution Company, the tragic incident was caused by a high-tension line snap on the low tension line which resulted in a voltage supply outside the limit. In a statement, the head of corporate communication of Cardinal Electric, Abdul Aziz Abdullah, expressed sadness over the incident, saying that preliminary investigation revealed that the incident was a result of high tension line snap on the low tension line, which resulted in a voltage supply outside limit. And now the Kano State Consumer Protection Council on Thursday disclosed that it has confiscated over 1,200 substandard tricycle tires within the metropolis. The CPC Managing Director Abubakar Ali Mohammed stated this in a press statement made available to newsmen by the council's spokesman Mos Bahu Yakasai in Kano on Thursday. Ali Mohammed urged tricycle cycle owners and riders to always ensure that they bought and used standard spare parts for their tricycles to save the lives and property of passengers. Also, he called on members of the public to voluntarily offer useful information to the police commission toward achieving their set objectives. The managing director who reinstated his commitment towards fighting expired fake and soft standard product in uh, commended Dr. Abdullahi Ganduja for providing him with the opportunity to serve the people of Kano. In the meantime, the House of Representatives at the plenary on Wednesday passed through second reading a bill for an act to amend the Violence Against Persons Act 2015 to increase the penalty for the offense of female genital mutilation. The proposed legislation sponsored by Honorable Ganil Johnson specifically seeks imprisonment of four years or a fine not exceeding 200,000 naira for any person who performs female genital mutilation or engages another to carry out such circumcision. In his lead debate, Johnson expressed optimism that an amendment of the said Section 6 would go a long way in deterring persons from engaging in the unwholesome practice of female genital mutilation. On the African scene now, Somalia has begun repatriating troops. It said it sent for training in neighboring Eritrea after protests in several Somali cities over accusations that they had been recruited under false pretenses and held captive. The soldiers were sent to Eritrea during former President Mohammed or Mohammed Abdullahi for Maju's administration. After coming to power in May, President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed's government said that 5,000 missing soldiers had been found in Eritrea and will be brought home soon. The apparent secretive recruitment of young Somali men stirred public anger and triggered protests in the capital Mogadishu and elsewhere. The Somali and Eritrea governments denied the men were held against the wheel. Little is known about what the Somali troops did while in Eritrea. 
A UN report last year cited a report that some of them were sent to fight in a war in neighboring Ethiopia's Tigray region. Somali authorities denied that the soldiers fought in Ethiopia. Abdi Salam Gulad, former deputy director of Somalia's National Intelligence and Security Agency, who first revealed the soldiers' presence in Eritrea, told newsmen that their return was great news but called for more transparency. And now, Al Shabaab fighters have attacked a police vehicle in eastern Kenya, killing two officers and one civilian. Police and the armed group said. Al Shabaab Radio and Dalo said in a broadcast. The government killed two Kenyan security forces and injured several others in the attack. The group killed about 166 people at Garissa University in 2015 and 67 at the Mall in Nairobi in 2013. But the frequency and severity of, an, of Al Shabaab attacks in Kenya have reduced in recent years. The Al-Qaeda franchise continues to make a cross-border raids as part of its campaign to pressure Kenya into withdrawing its forces from Somalia which makes up part of African Union mandated peacekeeping force, ETMIS. Images shared by the police showed a burned out truck and a body lying in the sun. Police said they had leaked to information on the whereabouts of other police officers traveling in the vehicle. And on the international scene, a Shanghai hospital has told its staff to prepare for a tragic battle with COVID-19 as it expects half of the city's 25 million people will get infected by the end of next week while the virus sweeps through China largely unchecked. After widespread protests against strict mitigation measures, China this month began dismantling its zero-COVID regime which had taken a great financial and psychological toll on it, 1.4 billion people. China's official death count since the pandemic began three years ago stands at 5,241, a fraction of what most other countries faced, but now looks bound to rise sharply. China reported no new COVID death for a second consecutive day for Wednesday, even as funeral parlor workers say demand for their services has increased sharply over the past week. The Shanghai Deji Hospital posting on its WeChat account late on Wednesday estimated there were about 5.43 million positives in the city and that 12.5 million in China's main commercial hub will get affected by the end of the year. And a few tanks exploded into flames in Colombia's Caribbean city of Baraquila early on Wednesday, killing a firefighter who fell during the explosion, local authorities said. The firefighter was identified as Javier Solano 53 by Colombia's president Gustavo Petro in a message on Twitter in which he pledged to support the city's mayor, Jaime Puma Rejo. Black smoke rises during the fire in hydrocarbon storage area of the Bravo Petroleum Company in Barranquilla, Colombia. Operations to control the fire could take between three and four days as firefighters wait for the blaze to consume all the fuel, authority said. And I stand to take a look at the stock market now. The NGX whole share index and market capitalization once again closed in an upbeat by 0.05%, closing at 49,499.49 or 43 basis point and 26.98 trillion naira respectively. On again as least, Julius Berger, Nigeria POC, Champion Bureau, Nigeria POC, and Adova POC gained 9.9%, 9.3 and 9.2. Percent to close 23 Kobo 30 Kobo or 23 Naira 30 Kobo Rada and 4 Naira 70 Kobo and 19 Naira uh, there. Each Y, a white Tumors, Wyatt, Nigeria POC, and Japan Gold gain about 8.8 percent and 7.7 percent each to close at 74 Kobo and 28 Kobo respectively. On the flip side, now UPDC real estate. Investment Trust uh, recorded a 6.5% loss to close at 290 Kobo. Others include Lasaco Insurance or Assurance PLC, losing 5.6% to sell at 85 Kobo. 
University Press PLC made a 5.3% depreciation to close at 180 Kobo. Coronation Insurance took a 5% hit to sell at 38 Kobo. YJ's Bank PLC saw a 2.4% slide to close today at 83 Kobo, respectively. But that's it on Stock Market Report. And that's all we have time for the news at this hour. Many thanks for watching. I am Franco Malafe. Bye-bye for now.